In this video, I'll show you everything it takes, step by step, to start playing your favorite classic games on any model of the PlayStation 3 using the incredible power of RetroArch. No matter whether you want to take on Iron Mike from your USB drive or copy over your content directly to your PlayStation 3 hard drive and build your own power library, this video's got you covered. Grab your jailbroken PlayStation 3 and fire it up. Retro gaming awaits, and we're starting now. Click the subscribe button and ring the bell to become part of the conversation. And check the video description for the links featured in the video and the latest show notes and updates. RetroArch for the PS3 is kind of a unique bird. It's not hosted on the RetroArch website, it's hosted at Brewology. On the page, scroll down and instead of going to the download section like you typically would in Brewology, it's linked in the description. You can grab the official version here. Click on the CEX version to download the package file. Once the download's complete, transition over to your PC's downloads folder. You'll have the RetroArch package file already in the folder. You should also add a folder with any ROMs that you intend to use in the downloads folder, and also add a folder with any system files that you intend to use. Insert a USB drive formatted in FAT32 format into your computer. Once the drive pops up File Explorer, you can copy over everything that you have in your downloads folder, which is your RetroArch package file, any ROMs you intend to use in a folder, and also the system files if you intend to use them. Grab everything in your downloads folder and copy it over to the root of your USB drive. Once the copy over process is complete, you are done with your PC at this point. You can close out the File Explorer windows and then take out the USB drive and put it into your PlayStation 3 in the rightmost slot no matter whether you have a 2 port or 4 port PlayStation 3 system. Then power on your PlayStation 3 system because this is where the fun begins. From the cross media bar of your PlayStation 3, if you're using a PS3 running HEN, activate HEN from the game section. Then scroll down until you get to the package manager and select package manager with the X button. From the list of choices inside package manager, scroll down until you see install package files and select it with X. Then scroll down to standard, that's the USB drive. Select standard with X to continue. You'll find the RetroArch package file here. Select it with the X button to install it. Grab your favorite hot or cold beverage because it takes about 5 minutes for the package file to completely install to your system. Once the package for RetroArch is completely installed, you'll get a confirmation message that the installation is complete. Press the circle button to go back to the cross media bar. Now you'll see RetroArch on your cross media bar. Use the D-pad to scroll down to RetroArch and press X to launch it for the first time. RetroArch will install some basic files and folders on your internal hard drive of your system that it needs to operate properly. With your PlayStation 3 connected to the internet, navigate to the online updater section and select it with the X button. You can skip the core downloader and core updater because you just downloaded the most recent version of RetroArch, and there aren't any playlists to update the thumbnails for. You can skip over content downloader for now and explore that later. I would recommend that you update any core info files. And perhaps most importantly of all, go down to Update Assets and press X to make sure that you get the most recent set of assets for RetroArch. They do not come natively pre-installed with the package file. Once the assets are completely downloaded and installed, you can optionally update any controller profiles or install any cheats. And hey, no judgments there. I definitely recommend updating the database files. Navigate down to that with the D-pad and select it with X. Next up, navigate down to Update Overlays and select it with the X button. Once that's done, navigate down with the D-pad to Update CG Shaders and select that with the X button. And last on the list is the On Demand Thumbnail Updater. You can turn this on, but there's not a lot of support for this in the text-based menu for RetroArch on the PlayStation 3. With the online updates complete, press the Circle button to go back to the main menu for RetroArch. From here, you should restart RetroArch so it can load all of the assets and other files that you've updated. Scroll down in the listings for the main menu to quit RetroArch and select it with the X button. Back at the PlayStation 3 cross media bar, select RetroArch again with the X button to go right back into it. If you just want to play your ROMs off of a USB drive, it's pretty straightforward. Navigate down to Load Content and select it with the X button. From the list of drive locations, use the D-pad to scroll the highlighter down until you get to Dev USB 000. Then select it with the X button. That's the USB drive that's in the rightmost port on your PlayStation 3. And from here, you'll see the list of files and folders on your USB drive, including the test ROMs that I've included here. I have ROMs for Genesis, Nintendo, and Super Nintendo. 
Use the D-pad to move the highlighter down to your ROMs folder and select it with the X button. In test ROMs here, I actually have these each split out into their own folders. So in this case, I'm going to grab NES. Use the D-pad to move down to NES and select it with the X button, or select the ROM folder or ROMs of your choice here. To be the champ, you got to beat the champ, and I'm going to load Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Use the D-pad to scroll down to the ROM that you want to choose and select it with the X button. You can use these either in zip format or in their native format, in this case, which would be .NES files. If they're zipped up, you need to go into the archive and scroll down to the .NES or Famicom file, depending upon which version of the files that you're using. Select the game file with the X button. Then you'll need to select a core. In this case, I'm going to use Quick NES. Select the core that you want to use with the X button. This will load the ROM right off of your USB drive directly into your system for play. That's how you load a game, but it's also helpful to know how to back out of a game so that you can get back to the RetroArch main menu. Luckily, this stuff is pretty much all pre-configured for the PlayStation 3 DualShock controller. All you have to do is take the two thumbsticks on the controller and press them directly inward toward the controller. This will take you to RetroArch's in-game menu. From this point, just use the D-pad to scroll down to Close Content and select it with the X button. This will take you right back to the RetroArch main menu. If you want to build your own retro game empire on your PlayStation 3 internal hard drive, here's how that's done. You'll need to exit RetroArch and go back to the cross media bar. Scroll down to Quit RetroArch and select it with X. You can copy the content from your USB drive directly to your PlayStation 3 hard drive with Multiman. Launch it from the cross media bar, and if you don't have it already installed, I have the link to download it for you in the description. Inside Multiman, select File Manager from the main menu, or press and hold the Start and Select buttons for about 2 seconds. Use the right thumbstick to navigate to the icon that says PS3 Root, and double click on it with the X button to select it. This will open up a separate window. Inside this window, you should see a list of drive choices exactly like you did inside RetroArch. To access your USB drive, navigate down to Dev USB 000 and double click it with the X button. You'll see the folders and files on your USB drive listed here. In this case, I have ROMs in the Test ROMs folder, so I'm going to double click into it with X, and that's where the subfolders for the ROMs are. If you organize your ROMs into folders, it'll be much easier to move things around. Select the ROMs folder you want to move with the X button, and then press the circle button on the controller. This pulls up a pop up menu. Select Copy with the X button to copy the ROM folder. To get back to the list of drives, navigate to the folder at the top with the two dots and keep double clicking on it with the X button until you get back to the list of drives. To access your internal hard drive, navigate down to Dev HDD 0 and double click it with the X button. RetroArch folders and files are stored in a specific location on your hard drive. To access it, navigate down to Game without the S and double click it with the X button. These folders with seemingly random letters and numbers actually represent games on your system, and in this case, RetroArch is represented by SSNE10000. Navigate to it with the pointer and double-click it with the X button. Next, navigate into the user directory. It's listed as USRDIR. Select it and double-click it with the X button to enter the directory. Next, select the cores directory and double-click it with the X button to enter in. Finally, to properly store your ROM folders, navigate down to the Downloads section and double-click it with the X button to enter into it. Once inside the Downloads folder, press the Circle button to pull up the pop-up menu and select Paste with the X button to paste your ROM folders here. Anytime you attempt to paste files, you'll be prompted to confirm. Select Yes with the X button by sliding to the left with the D-pad and selecting Yes with X. If you need system files for any of the consoles that you want to use, let me show you how to put those on here as well. You'll need to navigate all the way back to the list of drives by double-clicking X on the folder at the top with the two dots until you go back in all of the submenu systems until you get back to the list of drives. Back at the list of drives, and with the USB drive still inserted into the rightmost port on your PlayStation 3, select Dev USB 000 by double-clicking it with the X button. One of the challenges you might face is depending upon the name of the folder that you have your system files in, it may or may not duplicate it with one capitalized and one not. The best way to manage this is no matter where you have your system files, go into that folder directly and copy every single one of the system files within there. There is no universal copy all, at least not that I could find. And I sure as heck tried. 
but I found the easiest thing to do is literally just mark every single one of those by highlighting it and then pressing the X button on each one of them individually. Then press the circle button and in the list of choices select copy with the X button. This will copy every single file inside your system folder stored on your USB drive. With everything copied, just like before, you can go all the way up to the top to the folder with the two dots and double press on the X button until you get back to the list of drive choices. And again, at the list of drive choices, you'll need to navigate back to your internal hard drive. It's dev HDD zero. Select it and double click on it with the X button. And then it's exactly the same path as you previously used. Navigate to game without the S, double click on it with the X button. Then inside this folder, go to SSNE 10,000 and double click on it with the X button. Go to the user directory, USR DIR, double click it with X. Then navigate to cores and double click on cores with the X button. You'll already have a system folder pre-configured here by RetroArch. Go to the system folder and double click on it with the X button. And inside the system folder is where you want to paste all of those files that you just copied. Press the circle button and in the pop-up menu, select paste with the X button to copy all of your system files over. Just like before, you'll be prompted to confirm. Slide over to the left and select yes with X to copy those files over. Once your system files are copied over, you're done with the file manager inside Multiman. You can press and hold the select and start button for about two seconds and it will take you back to the Multiman cross media bar menu. From the MMCM cross media bar, navigate all the way to the left to the MMCM setting. Then you can just press up on the controller to get to the bottom of the list. Select quit with the X button. From the PS3 cross media bar, navigate down to RetroArch and select the RetroArch application again with the X button to launch it. From the RetroArch main menu, you'll launch games installed on your hard drive in a very similar fashion to the way that you did from USB, but it's going to be a lot more efficient. Navigate down to load content on the main menu and select it with the X button. But this time, instead of having to select a drive, just go down to the folder that says downloads and click it with the X button. Now you'll find the folders for the ROMs that you've already installed. Then to choose your game, you just navigate to the folder that you want with the D-pad and select it with X. Choose your ROM and if they're compressed, go into the compressed volume, select the file and select the emulator of your choice. In this case, I'll be using SNES 9X to launch Super Mario World. Now that you have this set up and running, there are a ton of great things you can do with your PlayStation 3 to add even more value. Check out the video shown here and linked in the pinned comment and description below for more great PS3 content.